Welcome everyone to a brand new take with Michelle Perez and friends. As you know, Michelle is a speaker, food story finder, author of a newly released book, Leaving Large. Michelle was a food addict and gained and lost 700 pounds in 40 years. She has found the secret to keeping the weight off through food stories. Michelle, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Colleen Meyer, moderator and producer extraordinaire for that wonderful um, introduction. Thank you, Gina, Gina Cushenberry, who is our nutritionist, because we got to get the food right. She's on, on board with us tonight. And as Colleen said, I'm Michelle Pettis, um, the author, the author, bona fide author of a new book already released, Leaving Large Stories of a Food Addict out and selling right now so yay super super excited and you know <laughs> normally colleen you have to remind me you have to remind me to talk about it you don't have to remind me to talk about it tonight <laughs> you don't have to remind me to talk about it uh, so um before I, I talk about talk about the book i do want to talk about the fact um that we're here it's seven o'clock it's sunday night it's a brand new take and what we do every sunday night is we peel back the layers. We peel back the layers on why we eat what we eat, right? Because it's not about the food, it's about the story behind the food. You can go all sorts of places, all you can go all over the place and get recipes, and, and we do have them. <laughs> we do have them, so I'm not discounting recipes, but you can count ca calories, you can count carbs, you can count micros, you can count all of that. You can count crunches, you can do sit-ups, you can do all of that stuff but until you get your mind right right until until you start asking the hard questions and sitting with the answers and figuring stuff out and making the right connections around what to eat but the right things to eat for nourishment and nutrition you're just going to stay on a cycle you're just going to stay on the hamster wheel and we're about stopping the hamster wheel that's what we're going to do and um i figured out I figured out after 40 years and 700 pounds being on the yo-yo of mindless eating, of unconscious eating, of emotional overeating, because we all eat emotionally, all right? Uh, experiential eating, after 40 years of that, I figured out how to get conscious, how to get conscious, how to get mindful, how to get in alignment, how to stay in alignment and uh, find some peace find some peace and I'd always be battling my body, my mind and food. And I did that with food stories and the book. I just, so I'm just, I'm just going to take a break and I want to read a couple of things because this week has been so exciting with y'all just indulge me for a second with responses. So just one tonight, I have to put on my glasses, just one tonight. I put in, um, I put in the group this, this sweet, sweet um, affirmation, not affirmation, uh, testimony, testimonial rec recommendation that my, I found my high school English, English teacher. I found my high school English teacher a year ago when I first started writing and she's been so supportive. And tonight, this is what she sent me. In her book, Leaving Large, Michelle Pettis tells stories that get to the heart of why she ate excessively. What she may not have realized when she wrote the book is that when we tell a story that gets to the heart of anything, it gets to the heart of everything. That's why I re recommend her book. That's why I recommend her book. That's why I recommend her book. That's why that's why I recommend her book. And I'm, I, I keep saying that because I lost my page. That's why I recommend her book for everyone. So I'm going to read that again because it was pretty deep because she was like that. She was like that even when I was in high school. What she may not have realized when she wrote the book is that when we tell a story that gets to the heart of anything, it gets to the heart of everything. That's why I recommend her book for everyone. Please give yourself and those you love a gift by downloading a copy for only 99 cent on Amazon on Tuesday, November the 30th from two to four. Is that, was that wonderful? Just, I, I, I kept reading it over and over again. I'm like, I, I feel like I got an A. <laughs> so, 
So what we're doing, what I'm doing on day after tomorrow, on Tuesday the 30th, November 30th, from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm doing a 99-cent download of Leaving Large, the Stories of a Food Act. And I'm doing that 99-cent download for those two hours for two reasons. First of all, I want the book to get to the bestseller status. I mean, like shamelessly, yes, I want it to get to bestseller. But but more importantly, I want anybody who wants access to these stories, anybody that wants to read them, anybody that needs the information to be able to have it. And for 99 cents, that's practically free. So even if you don't, even if you don't have the money, somebody you know can download it for you, can get it for you for not for 99 cents. Then afterwards it go it goes back up. Or if you're not an ebook person and you still want to help contribute to the sales, you can still buy the book, buy the book during that time period. Buy it on Amazon between two and four, either the 99 cent download or for the full price of $19.99. You it's shipped and you'll get it in a couple of days. So um that's what we're all pushing for. And um I'm sure I'll talk about it. I'm sure I'll talk about it again um later on tonight. But I just I just wanted to read that um that recommendation from her because I was so touched by it. Now the other thing that I want to read that I just saw that came in after that post from my teacher was um from a member of the I Am Brand New Now Facebook group who joined, um, I'm not exactly sure when, oh, she she said I was an inspiration back in May. The group was an inspiration back in May. So she joined in the spring, which was really less than six months ago. Uh, Joan, shout out to Joan. Congrats. You were my inspiration back in May when I could not get incentive to lose weight. Oh, thank you, Dolores, for sending the messages out to your friend. Yes. Um, despite poor biometric results, I just could not get started. Now, seven months later, I'm down 40 pounds. I'm down 40 pounds. I mean, I want to cry. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about that. And and here's and here's the thing, here's the thing about that. I don't, I don't know what Joan did. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what she did. I don't I don't know what exercise routine she what exercise she did, what movement she did. I don't know how she changed her diet. But here's what I do know that she did. I know she changed her mindset. I know she changed her mind. I know she changed what she believed. That's what she did. She changed what she believed. And now She's writing in 40, 40 pounds. I'm so excited. I'm so excited and delighted for her. I hope, I hope that um I hope that she's watching. I hope she will will ping us. I hope we I hope we hear some more for some more from her. Maybe we can get her on. Maybe we can get her on on a on a on a on a Sunday night and have her talk about what her what her experience was like. But um so big up, big up Joan, big up Joan, and uh, thank you and th and thank you so much. So those two things on the book. And then while I'm while I'm talking, just let me say this. I got a great I got a great review from Marita Golden. And uh, I think I, I think I put I put that out. And if, if you don't know who Marita Golden is, she's the author of 17 books and just of uh, just like this, this awesome, awesome writer, author, teacher, scholar that has been on the forefront of health issues, mental health issues and, and issues that impact black families for the past at, le at least 25 years. And um, so I'm going to be on a panel with her Wednesday night on November 1st. If you're watching in the DC area um, or you live in the DC area, uh, November 1st, Busboys and Poets, not Busboys and Poets. Oh, no, no, no. Mahogany Books. Mahogany Books uh, on Good Hope Road in Southeast. Yes, Molly. Is that December 1st? Yeah, what did I say? November 1st? I meant December 1st. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday. I'm so excited. Wednesday, Wednesday, December 1st at Mahogany Books, Anacostia Road. I mean, in Anacostia on Good Hope Road at Mahogany Books, we're going to be discussing, we're going to be discussing her book, the strong black woman, how a myth endangers the physical and mental health of black women. And that just dovetails into what I write about, right? Um, because if if we are 
if we are using food to deal with this, the stresses of trying to be that strong black woman, because we're not, because we're trying to deal with the myth, then all the food does is endanger, endanger our health and put us in, 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 in places where we're not able to serve ourselves or anybody else. So that's going to be, that's, that's going to be a juicy conversation. That's going to, that's going to be some good stuff. So if you can, if you can join us down at Mahogany Books, that would be a good thing. If you want to check out Marita's book, I know you can do that. You can do that as well. And, and quite frankly, you can check mine out at the same time. So enough of that shameless promotion, enough of the shameless promotion. We're going to get into the heart of the matter. I know, uh, and we're going to get uh, Gina's recipe this week. Excited about that. Um, and we, what we do on a brand new take is we take this time on Sunday night and we deal with everyday situations that are related to food and we break them down. We break them apart because it is the daily it is the daily experiences and the daily events and the daily just stuff that we have to deal with that has us sometimes thinking that we're hungry when we're actually frustrated, right? When we're, when, oh, that, oh, you got the, the, um, the, um, address for Mahogany Books. Thank you. Mahogany Books, 1231 Good Hope Road, Southeast DC, 220. Thank you so much. Um, so these daily interactions have us thinking that we're hungry when we're actually who we're actually something else. And so Colleen is going to read our dilemma for us this weekend, this week, this week's dilemma, this Monday dilemma. And if we had anybody weigh in on the answers, we'll get that. And then we'll um, we'll find out what our expert Gina has to say. And then I'll just share my opinion for what it's worth. Okay, so our Monday dilemma for this week is you are exercising daily and managing your diet. Your clothes are getting looser, but the scale is not moving. What do you do? So we did have some responses. Okay. Um, one of them was, I think this was towards you, Michelle, um, thanking you for your daily efforts and you are appreciated. And then another person said the scale is probably broken. <laughs> and then somebody else gave you whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, and um, let me see. Oh, Lisa said that she is um, watching from YouTube as Dolores Scott. So where it says to Laura Scott, it is our uh, oh, wonderful oh, friend, okay. Lisa. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, and Lisa, talking about Lisa, mm -hmm. she responded to your Monday dilemma by saying, remain steadfast and continue on your journey, but switch things up a little. Try different foods, exercises, but never give up and never stop nor go backwards. So those are the words of wisdom from Lisa. Oh, <laughs> I would say that those are very good words of wisdom. All right, so uh, Gina, you want to you want to weigh in on the on the question, my dear? Sure. Um, I'm with Lisa. I mean, the first thing thought in my mind is keep going, and I always say that to anybody that I'm seeing for weight loss, you got to keep going because the results are actually there. The scale you you need to have. I would say this is when we've talked about before other ways to measure right? Because sometimes the scale won't budge, but you're losing inches. You could be losing, you know, body fat actually, and, and not even really know it because the scale is not necessarily measuring it unless you have one of those fancy biometric scales per se. But um, I mean, in the reality of it, I would, I would say keep going. And then we probably do possibly maybe tweak something, but I would not just what I see people do is like, oh, it's not working. And they move on to totally something else. Just stay with it. That's where your mind starts to mess with you. Mm -hmm. So my best piece of advice would be keep going. Maybe you need to tweak one thing, just one thing, pick one thing to change and, and go from there. Oh, I think that's great advice. Tweak, tweak something, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, and a lot of times, you know, oh, hello, hello, Angela. I, and Sister Angela's on, right? <laughs> and the, my clothes are the first clue. That yeah. that's that that is really. I think that is 
is appropriate. Another way to measure, you know. Yeah, an, yeah. Another way to measure that, that your clothes are the, are the first food. You know, I, I want to, you know, talk about the scale uh, for just a minute because you hear so many things about whether or not to use a scale and how appropriate it is to use a scale. And I, I'm, I'm a scale user, right? I'm a, I'm a scale user, but the scale is not the only thing I use. I use a tape measure. I use my clothes and I use a mirror, all three. All, we, we have to, I think probably like the, the biggest thing is that the, the scale keeps us in accountability, Mm -hmm. Right. The scale keeps us in accountability. And, you know, in sure, you know, muscle is smaller, takes up less space and is denser and heavier than fat. And as you lose, you could lose fat and it, and it not even register on the scale that much and then and then get smaller. But here's why the scale is important. The scale, the scale, I think, is important because it's a, it's an indicator. It's a barometer and it's easy to even with your clothes, right? To, oh yeah, I can still button it, but it's, you know, the, that button is tight, but, you, but you're kind of saying to yourself, I can still button it, I can still wear it. It didn't look quite the same, but I, I, can, I can still wear it. But what happens, this, this is what I said, this is what happened to me, is that when we are um, sensitive, sensitive to eating in situations that are, that are high, high stress or high emotion, <clears throat> we might not always realize it is that, you know, there, we might not, we might not notice the change. We might not notice that something is going on, but if we look at, if you're going around and you're, you're clipping it at the, about the same weight, you know, you know, three, four, five pounds over time. And then you see something different that you might not have noticed your scale or your body can be the first indicator that something is changing in the atmosphere in terms of how you're reacting. Right. Because if you if you're not weighing, I weigh every day or well, every other day, I'm not I don't go like a week. I'm, I'm looking right because something could happen. And if you're going like a month or longer period of time and you're like, well, what what happened? Why? You know, why is this happening? But if you're all if you're always monitoring and always checking the scale. Keeps you in touch, keep makes you makes you mindful it forces you to be mindful of things that are going on that may be impacting your weight that you're not conscious of and so oh you can think you can look and say oh my god that's not what you no know, is is it is it is it something wrong with, with the scale is the scale broken you know are, are my clothes really feeling a little tighter do i notice some differences it, it it keeps you from being oblivious because i know Many times over the past 40 years, because I wasn't looking in the mirror, because I wasn't weighing, because I was just going from a from from a, a one size pair of black pants to the next size up, just you know, moving up, not not paying attention. And you and you one day you finally you are forced to look at yourself and you and you don't recognize yourself. You're like, wait a minute, what happened? When did when did that happen? Right? And that when did it happen was three three pounds, four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, three over time, because you never, because you didn't nip it in the bud. And I remember um, when I was in a, another part of my journey and I would be around friends that were my skinny friends is what I call them. And they were always talking about, oh my God, I gained three pounds or I gained five pounds. And I would get annoyed. I would really, I would really get mad. Like, what are you doing talking about three or five pounds? And what I realized now that I didn't realize then is they knew something then that I didn't know. And that is, it is easier to get in front of three pounds or five pounds than it is to get in front of 30 or 50. And that, that if there's something emotional that's going on in your space, that's causing something to shift and it's just a little bit well you know you can you can you can get you can wrap your head you can wrap your arms you can wrap your you can wrap your you can get a handle on a three or five pound problem because it's, it's at the beginning stages but if you just if you just let that three or five five pound problem what do you call it grow yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you let it fester right you, you let it fester and never address it then you know 50 pounds from now 30 pounds from now it you got you, you've got the issue and you've got you've got the issue that you haven't dealt with plus you've got your body that you haven't dealt with so um 
that's why that's why I think that the, the scale the scale is really is really an important it's a tool it's a it's a tool for us to, is to manage but I, but I also want to talk about and we've talked about this before off air is to talk about you know some of the non-scale victories that that you know make us happy right um and you know we all have them like I was just flying today and man to be able to sit in sit in the airline seat and, and buckle that buckle and pull pull the strap you know and not worry about an extender that was a good thing yeah you know, that, that was a good thing but we all have to have um some non-scale victories victories that keep us on track that make us happy and excuse me and if anybody if anybody's watching if you want to put some non-scale victories in the chat for us to talk about or some non-scale victories that you've experienced that you that you want to share um I think there was somebody in the group I think there was one but crossing your legs, remember? Yes, yes. One for a lot of people. It was for me, I remember, when I was in my own weight loss journey. So Yes. Yeah. yes. And, then some, and somebody put in there when your pants, when your when your when your thighs don't when your thighs mm -hmm. don't rub together, right? Yeah. Right. And so that shirt you that was tight and the buttons were <laughs> You know, and then now, it's, now you can close it. You know, things like, but you know, those are those are still victories. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that that's real. That you know, that that is real. Oh, oh, so Lisa has another comment. Oftentimes, your body is simply shifting its contour. Calm down and let it adjust. Adjust. Remember, we didn't gain weight overnight, and we're not going to lose it overnight. I that I think that is some sage, yeah. sage, sage, sage advice. And and what I will also say, uh, Lisa Dolores, and to anybody else who's watching, is that you know I this is the, I don't have any sort of medical proof or any sort of anything about this. This is just what I think. I think that if you have if you have some fat, this like that that first fat that's been with you a long time, right? And you and you're and you're getting down to the end of your journey, and, and it's the it's the first ten pounds or the first five pounds that you put on. They're the first five or ten pounds that have been with you the longest. You know, they're the one. They're 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 the five or ten pounds that are holding on the tightest. They're the one. You know, they're the five or ten pounds that that, that are saying, "Oh, what does she think she's doing?" Right? I've been I've been here. I'm not. I don't. I I like it here. I like it here. I don't want to go anywhere. And so I think that I think that those those pounds fight harder. They fight harder to stay in place. I always. <laughs> I totally agree with that. I always tell people the last 10 are the hardest because I feel like for me, I don't have any medical proof on this one either, but I feel like that's when your body is like, oh, really? You think you want, just like you said, oh, really? You think you're going to lose this 10 pounds? Like how badly do you want it? Right. And that's when I, and that's when you really do have to kind of reach a little extra to get it. And I mm -hmm. think that's really like that, that last little peace there and I think what I've seen when you when you do put that work in and you fight for it those are the people that end up maintaining it and keeping it off yeah for for life yeah when you, when you really because you because you really kind of get it there you know what mm -hmm. I mean I think it's that that oh, last like, turning point yeah the, yeah the turning point those those mm -hmm. last those last 10 pounds to, yeah, that when you dig in. Okay, so here's a uh, here's a uh, non-scale victory. The ability to walk upstairs without getting winded. Yeah. And my ability to do more when working out. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That, that's a, and you know what happened, what I found that happens with that is that, that that doesn't just like automatically happen. It's just over time, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then one day you're, su you're surprised at yourself. You know, it just, it just shows up. It just shows up in your life as a, as a happy surprise. I think sleeping better is another one. I've had people no more snoring oh, yes. end with weight, with weight loss for some people. Mm -hmm. um, that's one or, or the sleep apnea, getting rid of that machine, never yes. having to use that again. Yes. 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 And, and certainly uh, getting, um, clearing out some medicines out of the medicine cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. But so so y'all, you know what? I, I had a non-scale, I had a non-scale victory that that showed up that I didn't even know it was gonna be a, you know, you, you know, sometimes things show up and you don't even know they're gonna be a non-scale victory. Mm -hmm. All right, one thing is like these rings, the rings yeah. sliding, sliding off. Well that I mean that just that just happened. 
but I had to get I had to get new underwear. I had yeah. I had to get new underwear. I was at the dentist. I was like this is like maybe like two years ago. I was at the dentist, and I was wearing my old underwear, and it it just slipped down. It just I was like. <laughs> 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 That's a big non-scale. <laughs> I, I just bent down, pulled it back up like nothing happened. <laughs> oh, well, but I, you know that you know that 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 happened. It's just like it was a that's real. Happen. That's real stuff. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Ha having to, I mean, but what? How much fun it was to go out and get some new stuff. You no, know, to get to. The non-scale victory, and though it is like those are some things that help us visualize the journey. Like a big one for me was being able to wear the towel, mm. you know, be, be, being able to wear the wear the towel around you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 was a big one. Or the um, for so many for so many years, I would go to the hotel. You know, sometimes the hotels they give you the they give you the robes, like you know the robe the robe would never close. You know, the robe wouldn't close. It just wouldn't, it was just, and I'm like, this is like a standard. I can't even wear the hotel robe. Uh, but now I can wear the hotel robe. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so I feel like, I feel like I've done something. But, it, but you never know how just some, I think some things that people take for granted mm -hmm. that they do all the time that, when you're in the when your body is fighting you, right? When you're in this battle that you can't enjoy, just like you know the simple pleasure of sitting down and crossing your legs and 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 doing it easily, right? Yeah. Do, yeah. Doing it doing it easily or getting or getting up from a chair. Exactly, less pain on the knees, on the joints, all of that stuff. All that, yeah, all of that. Oh, so we've got we've got a um a comment here. I watched the video on passing up. On the fat foods during the holidays, thought back to that video and passed up on the pie and whipped cream. I hate salads. Nice. And <laughs> That's a I huge victory. That. I yeah. love that. I love that. Oh, you know what? In speaking, I'm so glad you brought that story up. Let me tell. Let me tell you what happened to me for, at Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and this was like a huge, huge eye opener for me. Um. I went to some friend's house for Thanksgiving and, you know, there was food and people and everything was going on. And, and, and I don't know if you've experienced this before, but depending on how big the place is, how much food there is and how many people there are, they're like different seatings. You kind of like eat waves. And um, so food was just kind of flowing. And I was, I was hungry early. So I ate early. I ate early and another group of people came in and then another set of food came out and people were really grabbing their plates. Michelle, are you going to get your plate? Are you going to get some? This is good, really good. And I'd already eaten. I was full. And I was like, oh, you know, I've already, I've already eaten. I think I'll just go in here in the den. And I went in it and I went in the den really not because I was tempted because I you know, wasn't going to eat, but because I wanted to make room for the other people there at the table. And I, when I went in the den, um, there was a little girl in there. She's five years old. She was the only kid there. She was five years old. And I had talked to her at the table. And while we were at the table, she said to me, well, maybe you can be my friend. And if you have never had a little five-year-old say to you, maybe we can be friends. Mm -hmm. I just, it is just something that just melts your heart, right? And I'm like, yeah, sure, we can be friends. So I go into the den and I happen to have my purse and my and a book and a binder. And we sit in the den and we color. We color and draw while other people are in the in the um, dining room eating. And <laughs> it was the highlight of Thanksgiving for me, spending these moments with this little five-year-old and having this conversation with her about life and the world. And I thought to myself, in the old days, I would have missed this interaction. I would have missed this conversation. And how and I and I sat and I wondered how much else have I missed? Mm -hmm. Because 
I would have been in the old days, I would have been right there for that second round of food that I didn't need. Instead of being open and present to, to what this is all about. I mean, it's about human connection. It's about human experience. It's about how we, how we love on one another, right? It's, it's about family. It's all of that. It's like warmth and, mm, and I would have missed it. And I just, it was such a wonderful, wonderful day. And it was a wonderful, wonderful day because of Trinity. That's what that that's what my new my new little best friend's friend's okay. name is Trinity. Because of the time that Trinity and I had in there on the sofa talking, talking and coloring. And it would have never happened. It it wouldn't have happened at all. I would have missed it. Because because the food would have been would have been would have been taking its place, and that is that was just such a big lesson for me, and and it's and what I'm finding like being on the other side of this is like daily, I'm picking up. Oh, now that the food's out of the way, here's here's how I'm experiencing life in a different manner, and that's and that is the joy, that is the joy that I hope others can find. That's the joy that I hope others can find when um, they read the book. <laughs> leaving larger storage of the food addicts. That's the joy that I hope that people can find, even if they don't read the book, you know, even if they just sit with us on, on our Sunday nights and start rethinking about and getting some minds around what they eat, what you eat, why you, and why you eat it. If you just get that, if you just get um, some of Gina's recipes to keep you on track, which she's about to tell you about, if, we, if you just get that, then, you know, it's, it's all good. So I just segued into your recipe, Gina. Let's, let's do it. We're, we're, running, we're running along, but that's okay. It's the holidays. We can well, do it. Yep, and we're going to run into this week. I'm, I'm, we're going to be posting some leftover ideas, some okay. things that you can use um, with all those wonderful leftovers that we all, I'm sure, we have in our fridge. So I'm going to be providing a recipe for that. And so I think that's just the easiest way to get rid of it all. Uh-huh. Or inviting people over, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the question is, do you gain weight at the dinner table or do you gain weight with all the leftovers? Right. And so how Gina's can we gonna turn them into a, a healthy, healthy thing? So we can turn this into a healthy soup and we can also turn this into like a healthy salad and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, Colleen, I want to address what you said about do we gain weight at the dinner table or do we gain weight at, with the leftovers? You know, I did some research on this last year. And what I found in the research is that people really don't gain a lot of weight during the holiday season from like Thanksgiving, from Thanksgiving to Christmas. You know, it may be a couple of pounds. But if you take those couple of pounds and you multiply those couple of pounds over over 10 to 15 years, then you're dealing with the number because what happens is people gain the two or three pounds or the three or four or five pounds or whatever, and they don't lose it. Right. That's what the issue is. So it's not a lot. I mean, you could, you could gain it during the holidays. And then if you were vigilant, you could knock it off in January if you were, if you, if you paid attention, but most people don't, and it just keeps piling on three years, you know, three pounds, a, three pounds a year at just at Thanksgiving. I mean, just during the holidays, if you did three pounds a year for 10 years, you know, you're 30 in year 10, you, you got 30 extra pounds, you know. And then also to piggyback on that, I think that's how you do gain the weight. I, I, most people don't gain the weight from that Thanksgiving meal. Mm -hmm. They gain it from eating the leftovers mm -hmm. three, four, five days into it. So mm -hmm. that's why we got to turn them into something healthy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! So, uh, Dolores has a has a um, question. Gina, any suggestion for those that may have eaten a little too much on Thanksgiving? Maybe a de detox of some sort. Asking for a friend. <laughs> okay. Um, well, yeah, I always, I do actually have like a little three-day detox I sometimes recommend for people. It could be whether you're doing it with smoothies or with soups. Um, so maybe I'll throw in one of my um, green smoothie detox um, recipes this week. So you could you could use that. I mean, I, I would recommend you can use it. It's actually filled enough with enough ingredients from each food group that you could use it as a meal replacement. So perhaps taking out the dinner or the breakfast 
and replacing it. I don't usually recommend lunch. I feel like that's when you should get your calories in, have a big salad, but um, definitely to detox. Yep. Cut the carbs and throwing in that smoothie once a day can help as well. Okay. All yeah. right. Good, good question. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores, uh, for, for that question. That's Anybody? our Lisa. That's our Lisa. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying. I was trying to give. I was trying to give a shout out to Dolores too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that the detox is something to keep in mind as we um, continue in this holiday season, because you know it's this is just the first week. Oh, and I should say, I'm so sorry. I do. I do actually have a program too. I forgot when you said detox. <laughs> I do have a program that's for four weeks. Detoxify my life. Um, which gives you a basically a meal planner and a plan for those four weeks on what to do, what to eat. And it also gives you a little detoxing for your life um, tips as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and just while you're talking, just uh, give folks your, how to your, your email address and how to get in touch with you. And sure. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Gina Trim Nutrition. Um, you can also email me at Gina Trim Nutrition at Gmail. And if you want to, if you're interested in the program, I did co-create it with a friend. You can find the program and the details at therawgirl.com. The raw girl got time. The raw girl got dot com. Got yes. it. Rawgirl.com. All right. So um something to keep in mind as we continue throughout this holiday season because it's we've got another five weeks of it <laughs> well or yeah another five weeks um of holiday celebrations of holiday food of and people people are feeling a little bit more comfortable in the pandemic there's more gatherings there's more just yeah going out so we just we just have to be mindful and i i do want to say that um i was called out at that this at thanksgiving i, w I was at my sister's and we were having leftovers. And I said in the kitchen, oh my gosh, the best part of the best part of Thanksgiving is left is the leftovers. That's what I said. And my sister, my sister's son-in-law corrected me and he said, the best part of Thanksgiving is family. Uh -huh. And I said, you know what, Malcolm, you got me. I mean, you that that's the truth. The best, the best part is family. And, you know, we remember that, you know, we, we remember that. And when we focus on the family, we shift our focus from the food to family. It just becomes a better experience and a more, more, more memorable experience for all of us. And it takes practice. We take, it takes practice when we have years and decades of the first question being, what do you cook? You know, yeah. you know, what do you, what do you got? You know, what do we have? And, Rather being, what are, we, what are you bringing? Oh, 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 right. Oh, what are you bringing? Right. Rather, you know, rather, rather than, you know, good to see you. I love you. Some, you know, mm -hmm. some, some question that addresses our well being. So we just, it's, we just start with little shifts like that. So um, we're going to sign off. I think um, I want to thank you, Gina, for sharing your time and your expertise mm -hmm. with us again on uh, a brand new take. I want to thank you, Dr. Colleen. Uh, producer extraordinaire, moderator extraordinaire. I want to thank whoever, Lisa, who's watching, Angela, who's watching, whoever else is watching that, that didn't come on the chat, but you're watching and taking it in. And um, and I just, I want to thank anybody who who's on the journey, you know, who, who finds us, who finds um, the information what we talk about, something that's finds something meaningful to them and just stay on it. Just, I got, I got three words for you. Never give up, never give up even when it's hard. So that's never not, it is not too late. Not long as you have breath in your body, it's not too late. And now, now is the time. Not the first of the year, not tomorrow, not Monday, not next week, not when the kids get out of the house, not now. The moment is now. Now, not, never. And we'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>